Hey, this is Prometheus. This week in Madden, February 21st, 2021, guys. Got four defensive tips here uh, from uh, some YouTubers. I've got um, um, a couple of YouTubers I haven't featured on this before. I've got a couple of guys that I have. Uh, but uh, we're going to be doing uh, defense. Uh, you guys, if you like quick breakdowns, 20-minute uh, videos where you can see uh, breakdowns of uh, defensive tips and offensive tips in Madden. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll be doing this on a weekly basis. And if you have a channel yourself that you're looking to promote uh, and you've got uh, basically some good stuff, go ahead and, and let me know down in the comments and we can uh, talk about uh, putting a video on one of these weekly breakdowns. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one of this week. So uh, this channel is one of my favorite uh, YouTube channels is Mile How Chosen One. Uh, he's a competitive man player. He actually plays in money tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, and what I like about his tips is he really tries to simplify what he does as far as uh, breaking down his offense and defense. So definitely a good channel to check out. Uh, he's going to talk about disguising defense. This is something that um, I do myself, but he actually takes on, he provides another tip on how to not provide any kind of a tell to your opponent. So Let's go and take a look at this. This is something you need to implement into your defense right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come out here on defense. Let's come out, it don't matter what defense you come out in because this is universal. You can do this in any defense. Could come out in a three, three, five wide and let's just come out in cover four. And it really don't matter what they come out in. Uh, we're just gonna pick, pick random passes. So disguising your defense is basically giving them a look to make them think one thing, but you're doing the opposite. So if I show heavy pressure, I'm doing the opposite by dropping everybody in coverage. Or if I'm showing light, or if I'm showing a soft coverage, then I'm blissing everybody or I'm, I'm bringing a house. So what we're gonna do is, if you guys didn't know, if you press the, the, the D-pad to the left and down, you bliss all your linebackers. You understand that, right? Um, if you press twice, your linebackers will hover in the gap. Now, this is, the typical blitz setup. Now, if we want to disguise our coverage, all you have to do is press X and press the L, T, or the left trigger button. And what's going to happen is they are in, they are in zones now without the linebackers even moving. Now, there's two setups to this, and I'm going to show you both. This is like the rookie setup. This is like the setup that you're, if you're not comfortable, you ain't got a, a lot of a, a lot of like quick hands and things like that. Now. You may say, why is this important? This is important because you may be heating up your opponent all game. Or you may be just sending pressure to your opponent all game. And without without them even knowing, they might try to quick snap and throw a quick pass across the middle of the field or whatever because they think you blissing or they look like you blissing. And they're going to throw right into one of them yellow zones. Right? So this can change the game. Uh, maybe at the end of the game. Um, it could be a big momentum swing during the game. You might be down. And this can help you out. This is disguising your defense. Now, um, we don't care what the offense do. I, mean, I really don't care. I'm not even playing defense. Uh, what we're going to do is the next thing I'm going to show you guys is is um, an advanced way to do it. Now, first, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the rookie one more time so you can see what's going on. So what happens is we're going to blitz everybody, as you guys can see. We're going to press twice. Linebacker should come down. Now, what you may notice is, is when, I, when, when I disguise the defense, when I press X and LT, don't know, the linebackers don't move, but you see the corners in that slot corner move. Now, in the advanced tip, you want to try to touch them corners before they snap the ball, and then when you disguise it, don't nobody move because they're not going to know what you did. So we're going to do that next. We're going to let them. We're going to let the computer do their thing. Uh, we really don't care. Um, but this right here can help you guys out. I'm trying to tell you this. This will change the way you play the game. You know, right here, and you know, we getting the pick. I just fall down. Now, let me show you in advance where to do it. So it's the same way. You're going to blitz everybody. And what you're going to do this time is you're going to just touch everybody just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You don't, it just, just touch these three. And what's going to happen is when we disguise it, X, L, T, nobody move. But guess what? Everybody is in coverage. So your opponent don't know what you just did. He just looked, it looked like you just sent a heavy pressure. Or it just looked like you just didn't touch your defense or didn't move your defense. Right? So... This can kind of kind of confuse your opponent to throw you interceptions or you can get more sacks in the game uh, because now you're playing mind tricks with your opponent. You know, this may sound cliche, but playing Madden is really all about playing like playing chess. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's about who got who, who got the better scheme. You know what I'm saying? Who has the better, you know, sad to say who has the most glitches. It, it just, you know, Madden is all about glitches, but it's about who's going to outlast who basically 
And with stuff like these, stuff like this can propel you to be better than your opponent if you know these things. A lot of, a lot of people don't know stuff about this. You know what I'm saying? I'd be surprised if anybody know about this, to be honest with you. Um, so... So this next channel that we're going to be featuring is Rage Rel. He's actually have been on this uh, week in Madden before uh, with some of his other tips. Uh, and he's actually going to show you how he locks up the dreaded gun split pats close. You know, that, that this, the gun close formation has been a formation that's been used uh, for five, six, seven years now, almost 10 years now. Uh, and it's a very difficult uh, formation to stop, especially if you run into someone who really knows how to uh, basically shut it down. So he actually has a defensive strategy to go ahead and shut down that particular formation. So if you ran against uh, split close and you struggle against shutting it down, this is a good uh, defensive tip video to take a look at. The play we've been talking about is cover two sink. And like I said, I called this play 1,041 times only gave up 4.6 yards of carry so i'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to 146 especially versus split close pass so this is one of the formations i love to run it again so actually i'm gonna start off by showing you that you can actually stop the run so right here you do see we have the run so as far as the setup so you need to just press now from here you can either pinch your line or spread them i personally like the pinch you do not have to do that and also one thing i forgot to mention make sure auto flip is off do not have auto flip on because it's going to be kind of random where they line up so uh, with that said, you just want to press, pinch your line. You see we're right here, quarterback attained. Now from right here, I like to use it this safety. So if you want to think about it this way, you want to use it a safety to the one receiver side. So if they flip their formation, then we'll be using it in this safety. And you just do the same adjustment I'm about to tell you, but just in opposite order. So as far as adjustment goes, you just want to take triangle, double tap triangle, select circle. You want to put them in the outside third. Now the reason outside thirds are good because since the cover three patch, outside thirds actually do a great job of playing different routes and they actually will not get bombed. So it's, it's extremely hard to bomb outside third with this update. Maybe it might change in the future, but for now, outside thirds are the way to go, to be honest. You don't even need to really need a deep half anymore, to be honest, because that's how hard it is to bomb those outside thirds. Now, for the second adjustment, I like to take X. I like to put him in the inside third. Now, the reason I like to do this is so I'm not in charge of the middle. So, uh, from this point, everything else is up to you. Legit, everything else is up to you at this point. So, I like this cover shell just because we have an outside third, and we also have him in the middle. So, it's like a cover three. It's, it's pretty much like a cover three cloud, and we're essentially using um, this side of the field. So one of the things I like to do, if you're curious about real, how do you do it? So I might start off by taking R1 and putting him in a hard flat. So this is going to stop those little table routes and things of that nature. And then if they want to run like a little corner route, then I would just take him. And I, I'll get into that in a second, actually. I'll, just, I'll get into that in a second. I promise I will. Uh, but I like to take X and re-put him in the hook. I don't really like him playing the mid-read. I like running it just like this. So now, with your user, you go, you're just going to fly down and just fill this gap right there that's created. So you see that natural gap right there? I'm going to go into replay and I'm going um, to... Actually, I'll run it one more time. I'm going to show you how fast I can set this up, by the way. Because a lot of people think, you know, you might get quick snap. So right here, boom. Maybe drag him down a little bit. Double tap the right direction to select X. Put him in the hook curl. And also, I do have gameplay on this as well. I have gameplay. So right here, all you want to do is just fly down and just fill this natural gap right there. As you can tell, I could just sit there and run this all day. As you're going to see that it's going to stop and run. Um, there's really nothing that they can do about it. Um, it's just a really good, really good defense. So the reason this works, right? So what's going to happen is your user is filling this gap that's created because he's going to, uh, the running back is going to take him. Normally, they won't do that kind of animation. He's actually going to get taken by the uh, tight end uh, that's right here. So if he gets a block shot, that's open. And now the reason this is good is because he's actually whipping around. And the reason this works because they double team this uh, defensive end that's technically a tackle. So they technically double team the, the tackle. And then the guard, as you tell, he actually does nothing pretty much. And it's going to be like that even in gameplay. As you're going to see, like I said, I do have gameplay for y'all. Uh, I just want to show it at the end because I want to show you everything. And then I want to kind of do like an end of the video highlight. Let me know if you kind of like that uh, approach. But um, that's I'm gonna show you actually if they flip the run play. So let's say maybe they uh maybe they call it this way, right? So now what? I'll come on this side, um, and you can still send the same blitz off that same side. You just want to switch responsibility. So now what? I may take him and put him like this. Take triangle, put him like this. And remember, I said you can do anything you want. So now what? I could double tap the right direction of select my linebacker. Maybe put him in a hard flat for like a little table route or anything like that. Double tap X. A double tap the right direction select so like x put them in the hook curl or something so now watch what happens so they're gonna try to run the ball and then look we're just kind of we're filling that gap so we're making that run play really really hard for them to sit there and run so the reason why i chose to do this um run play first so you can understand because i know i have a lot of people who say well it can't even stop the run can it and i'm telling you yes it does and there, so you heard me talking about the table route so now let me show you how this defense look versus pass coverage so uh let me go ahead and set up the base shell so this is our base shell 
And the reason I said base because at this point you should be able to do this adjustment real easy. You should be able to put this person in an outside third. You should be able to put this guy in a, in a um, middle third. And you should be able to make it back to your user. Now from this point, I recommend taking R1 and putting him in a hard flat first and then taking X and putting him in a hook curl and just see what your opponent wants to do. So let's go and snap the ball so you can kind of see, you know, how good of a job it does. It's just, he's going to scream right there. So the reason I like this play because he's going to scream nine times out of ten. If they send that running back out on a route, just know they have about two seconds to throw the ball in, as you just saw right here. So like I said, I like putting him in the hard flat. I cannot tell you how many picks I caught because of this because it kind of does a good job of lurking it and then they throw it and you jump that get an easy pick. Now, of course, you're thinking, real, this is going to be wide open. And one of the things you have to realize, please realize this. No matter what defense you're in, you're never going to cover every single area of the field. Even if you drop eight, nine people, you're never going to cover every inch of the field. Because then if you drop eight, nine, and guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to route bounce into an open spot of the field. So <laughs> that's why, you know, of course, there's going to be something open. But if you can control what's open, you're going to win. Now, now this is the first time that uh, Captain Spacely 7 has actually been featured on This Week in Madden. Uh, he does other types of sports videos too, but actually he breaks down um, a defensive strategy that he uses to bait people into interceptions and stuff like that. Uh, and it's basically using cover two and um, basically you know disguising your coverage with with, with cover two. Uh, and I, I, you know everybody's always ran into somebody that just basically makes the right adjustment at the right time. And this is something that you probably want to have in the back of your head when you're playing against someone. Get them in a money down where it's a third or fourth down, and it's like medium yards or short yard. It just might. Be be a good play that you might want to consider jump throwing into your scheme. So let's go ahead and jump into his breakdown. Today's video is going to be on cover two. You can use any cover two for this. Again, it is so awesome whether you're a 4-3 guy, a 3-4 guy. Any cover two will work. Typically, I use a Tampa two for the cover two disguise play. So again, that is what we're going to run here. Again, a Tampa two or a base cover two defensive play. That is what you kind of want to run the cover two disguise out of. And how you run the cover two disguise is essentially just picking a cover two as you see here, and then we are going to base a line and then play underneath coverage. So again, base a line and then play underneath coverage. So how you do that on Xbox is hit Y, and then right on the left thumbstick or triangle and then right on the left thumbstick on PlayStation. And that is going to base align the coverage. As you'll see right here, you'll see the corners actually step back and look at they get a little bit deeper, looking like a cover four look or a base look. Then we are going to play underneath. So you're going to hit Y and then down on the right thumbstick again, tri or triangle and then down on the right thumbstick. And you see the blue zones there, they're going to change to those shaded ones and they're going to be hard flat. So they're going to play underneath. So again, Y and then right on the left thumbstick and then Y and then down on the right thumbstick. It's super easy, you'll get it, but that is how you run the cover two disguise. That's going to be our setup for the cover two disguise. It's super important, but it is super quick. Up next, we're going to talk about the stick setup and then the over the top as well. While you have this up, again, just hitting wire triangle will bring up this menu. LB is for sticks, and then up on the right thumbstick is going to be the over the top. We are gonna to utilize that in the play too, but again, for our dis cover two disguise, it is going to be base align and then play underneath. That is gonna be the money look. Again, we will get into it here, but that's the setup. So here we go with the cover two disguise. So again, you're going to base a line and then play underneath. So you're going to base a line and then play underneath. So that is going to make those outside corners play hard flat blues instead of their cloud flats. And then again, it looks like a cover four look and that is the setup. So this play is absolutely money because it looks like a cover four and people d generally think that it has really deep over the top coverage that they go underneath. And because you were playing underneath, your guys are waiting and ready to jump the underneath coverages as well. It is an absolute nightmare for short and intermediate passes. So short to medium passes, it is absolutely fire against. This is the play that you run against those guys that just run really quick short yard plays. Um, if they need a short third down, like a third and five, a third and seven even, like a short to medium third down, that's when you call this play. Because again, it is a cover two disguise because you could mix it up with cover four as well because you can run a cover four. I like to run a cover four as well. And then boom, 
they're not knowing whether you're in cover two or cover four, and then they think you're in cover four. So what do they do? They go to throw underneath, and bam, you're waiting for it. So again, base align underneath. This play is phenomenal. It can also get to the quarterback really easily, as you can see here. Boom. It is a nightmare off the edge as well, because again, you can utilize any cover two, but again, I typically stick with Tampa two or base cover two, but you can also do cover two blitzes as well in it. Again, just base align, play underneath. This is how I run all of my cover cover twos this year and next gen I really just like this setup so whenever I do run like a base cover two instead of running like a normal cover two this is my setup I base align and then play underneath again it is phenomenal you do have to watch out for the over the top stuff but that is why we have the next setup as well so just in case but again this is for short to mid passing again it's not great for the deep pass but it can I mean again if you can get by enough time your d-line can get there as you'll see I get interceptions from the deep pass all the time even with still shading underneath it is just a phenomenal play um, an absolute nightmare for passing coverages because it just gives you coverage everywhere you can lurk the user all day long with this so again and cover two disguise just it's just a killer i mean again so many interceptions your defense is going to be a one with this i mean absolute money but that is the cover two disguise again now this last tip is from pony montana uh pony montana has been um, a competitive madden player for a long time and he doesn't post a lot but when he does he posts some real good gems of Madden principles and tips and stuff like that and at this particular video is going to talk about how just simple adjustments to make your man defense so much better opposed to getting burnt over the uh, getting burnt all the time so uh, let's go and jump into this video but I, th this is another channel that you got to subscribe to because he's always put out some of the best content um, um, when, it, when, he, when he puts it out so let's go ahead and take a look Coming out in one of the obviously the meta the meta defenses, we're gonna come out in cover one hole press out of the double the double A gap nickel double A gap. It's a meta formation because there's a you know mid blitz is is running rampant through these uh, weekend league streets, and a lot of people are spamming stuff like this. So why not teach you guys how to run it yourselves? So people are either spamming mid blitz or they're spamming absolute no pressure and when that happens they have their they have their guys in the middle in, in the interior pretty much going crazy sitting there with double or nothing and they're spamming it a lot and it's frustrating to whoever whoever's playing now i'm here to talk about how to make your man coverage defense better and why your man coverage defense hasn't been that great and the reason that is and it's a weird one it's because of shading Shading has never been more important than this year, in my opinion, because a lot of people used to shade, but it used to be more towards zones um, in previous years. This year, shading when you're running man coverage, it's literally one of the most important things that you guys can do. Now, a lot of people, when they're running man coverage, let's just call corner strike. A lot of people, when they're running man coverage, they're, they're pressing and then they're shading over the top. If you guys don't know how to shade, it's triangle or Y to access the coverage adjustments. And then if you look to the bottom right, it's if you shade over the top, it's right stick up to shade underneath. It's right stick down. You can shade to the inside. You can shade to the outside. Now, a lot of people are sitting there spamming man coverage with one step aheads. If you guys don't know what one step aheads are, it's an ability in the game that you can put on your cornerbacks for three ability points and it helps your cornerbacks react quicker to, to uh, wide receiver cuts. It makes, it makes man coverage really, really good. Now, a lot of the times when you have that and you're having trouble still with defense, this is a brain-dead defense, mind you. You don't really have to do much with one step ahead. You can just call it, do what I'm about to tell you, and then just let it go. Now, one thing that you guys can do is just stop shading over the top. When you shade over the top, the guys don't press, okay? So you're sitting there. You got you, you got your guy that's sitting there with Amos, right? We're gonna we're just going to press Savage, and we're going to use this guy. When you guys shade over the top, which I just did, they don't press. Like, you're not going to get a pressing in you're not going to get a press animation from anybody that's on the offensive side of the ball. And I'm going to show you guys that for just, just for now, because you guys need to, this is the difference between why some one step aheads work 
better than others and it's simply because of shading that's why shading is so important you see how you see how the wide receiver just gets right up right off the ball boom the 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 corner doesn't really react to anything else like they don't really press they don't do anything they they're just they're just able to run their route and if you put them on a streak it's the same situation they're just able to run their their routes now when you have a one step ahead the reason why one step aheads are so important and so dangerous in this game it's simply because it's simply because they react quicker to the cut so if you're pressing them and you're running a slant that one step ahead is going to react to that slant quicker than he is if you're backing them up but once you start backing them up that's why you're not that's why people can't get beat deep it's because their man coverage is being shaded over the top that's why even if you have a Tyree Kill or a Randy Moss, well, maybe not a Tyree Kill in regs, but a Tyree Kill in Mutt, it's different because you got you also have cornerbacks that are really, really fast. Now, in Mutt, in regs, I mean, Tyree Kill is pretty much burning anybody that's pressing him. That's just a reality. That's going to happen in real life. It's going to happen in Madden. That's one thing that they got kind of right is Tyree Kill is burning you over the top. Now, for Mutt, if you press and have coverage over the top this is this is going to be something that people run right here right so we're going to press and we're going to shade underneath this time and you're going to see that these guys all try to press they all tried to press and the pressure the pressure with two people got there now obviously he broke the sack which is which, which is fine and dandy he broke another sack can you just what is going on but I, but now i'm going to show you the replay and see how much different it is once you shade underneath. This guy is still there, right? And these are this is reg, so these guys don't even have one step ahead. And he's there, and that, that route is clamped up. This route is kind of clamped up because he's underneath him. So he's shading underneath, and with one step ahead, he instead of him being able to just cut straight out. And get that he's gonna this guy the cornerback is gonna be in front of that ball because of how how important it is to shade underneath it's actually it's absolutely wild and it's something that we all should be doing when we're running man coverage now obviously you can you can back a guy up if you guys don't want him to shade underneath but that shading underneath is literally something that will take your man coverage and bring it to the next level you guys are gonna be able to clamp up a lot more people with just that tip alone all right, so guys, this concludes this week in Madden, February 21st, 2021. Uh, if you guys have tips or strategies that um, you want to share, you want to promote your YouTube channel, make sure you make a comment down below. If you like me doing these videos, make sure you comment below. Let me know that you like this. Do the thumbs up. Let me know. I, you know, I always want to try to help the Madden community, help you guys with additional tips and strategies. And sometimes I find some really good other YouTube channels uh, that are you know, provide some of the best stuff. So uh, once again, guys, thank you for your support. If you like this, hit a thumbs, a thumbs up. And if you have a YouTube channel that you want to go ahead and promote, go ahead and make a comment below. We'll go ahead and, and see if we can put this, something together for you. So thank you for support. Until next time.